Chapter 5 discusses some basic options in forming a business. And one of the first decisions that you're going to have to make after you have an idea for your business is what legal structure that business will take. And one of the things you're going to have to do for this course is create a business plan. And it will be very important that your business plan does detail the structure that you have selected for your new business. When deciding what legal form your business should take. There are three major forms of ownership that you'll consider, and there's some variations in each of these, but uh, there's sole proprietorship, there's partnerships, and there's corporations. And we'll, the book will discuss these in detail, and we'll go ahead and go over a couple of these in detail as well. Sole proprietorships are actually the most common form of business entity in existence, and most people when they start a business, uh, especially if they're starting just very small, will start as a sole proprietorship. And a sole proprietorship means just exactly kind of what the name implies there. It is just one person. That person is the business. Now there's some advantages and some disadvantages of sole proprietorships, but one of the major advantages is that's very easy to get going. You just simply start a business. Uh, you're your own boss. You have the pride of ownership. Um, there are some disadvantages as well, but we'll talk about that in the next slide. One of the most significant disadvantages of a sole proprietorship is unlimited liability. That basically means that if uh, if your business goes under, you are personally liable for all those debts. And uh, in theory, you could lose all your personal assets as a result of being a sole proprietor. The other uh, disadvantage that's a major disadvantage is the limit of lifespan. Um, if you pass away, um, that business legally ceases to exist. There's really nothing other than the assets uh, to leave a legacy. And that's why some of the other forms of business organization are a little bit uh, more popular as the business starts to grow. In terms of complexity, the next uh, legal organization up would be partnerships. And partnership means more than one person is involved. And uh, you will see general partnerships and limited partnerships. In a general partnership, everybody has a share uh, of the business, and uh, they also assume liability. In a limited partnership, the limited partner really can't make any management decisions, but they're also their liability is limited to just their capital investment within the business. There are some significant advantages of partnerships. Uh, one of those is the financial resources. If you have just one person, a sole proprietorship, then your ability to raise funds is limited to just your individual financial resources and credit report. If you have multiple people involved, then there's the ability to pull um, assets together and also perhaps uh, get some additional credit. There's also a longer survival if one partner uh, should pass away or decide to sell the business. Uh, the business can exist without that one partner, depending on how the partnership uh, agreement is written. Most larger businesses are corporations, and there's a, a couple of uh, different sub-types of corporation, but uh, the C-Corp, the conventional corp, is probably the most common for large, large businesses. And within a C-Corp, uh, the corporation actually acts as a legal entity unto itself, and it has the ability to bring in shareholders and invest money uh, through the sale of stock. There are advantages and disadvantages to corporations, but one of the most significant advantages is, of course, the ability to raise money by selling stock and also something called limited liability. Within a corporation, um, the corporation can be sued, but personal assets can be actually be protected if they're not part of the corporation. So if the corporation should go under or bankrupt, uh, that in theory would not affect your personal assets. Of course, with any advantage comes a disadvantage, and one of the advantages of uh, corporations I'll highlight here is uh, something called double taxation. What that means is that corporate profits are taxed at the corporate uh, income tax rate, but if those profits are distributed to the owners, to the shareholders, then those dividends or the distribution is actually taxed by the individual as well. So in theory, those profits are being taxed twice, which is why we call it double taxation. One type of corporation that might be of particular interest to small business people is the S-Corp. And uh, the S-Corp is, is treated like a corporation, although it does have some limitations uh, that you can read about in the text. But one of the adv uh, big advantages of an S-Corp is that the income is treated as if it's personal income, so you're not uh, double taxed. But the other advantage here is a lot of times when businesses first start, they don't make money. And so if you are an S-Corp and you do have losses, you can actually pass those losses in to write off some of your personal um, income that you might have from another source, which you can't do with a, a C-Corp. 
Again, this was just a brief introduction to this chapter. Uh, you'll learn a lot more about different types of corporations and limited liability corporations. You'll learn about uh, mergers and acquisitions and franchises, and you do want to pay attention to all of that. But as you're uh, creating your business plan uh, as your final project for this particular course, make sure you do pay very close attention to what legal entity type uh, your business is going to take and why you've made that decision.